Hello, and welcome to the In the Word podcast. This is the podcast that will help you to understand God's Word, build a stronger relationship with God, and develop habits that will help you love God and others better. And now, here's your host, Trevor Pope. Hey, what's going on, family? Welcome back once again. I pray all of you guys are doing great. It is an honor and a privilege always to chop it up with you guys on this podcast. Listen, I want to start out by saying thank you for all of the support of the podcast, of the YouTube channel, uh, the Facebook page, just everywhere you guys been showing support. However you've been supporting, I just want to let you know I truly appreciate it. Listen, the last couple of weeks, it seems that the conversation um, in my circle and just in my mind and in my heart and just with things I've been seeing, you know, what's been on my heart very heavy and has been a topic of conversation is just really dealing with mercy. You know, we know that the scripture says in Luke 6 and verse 36, be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. And I just feel like this podcast, I just want to stay along the lines of that. I think this is something that, you know, needs to be continually talked about because of all the things that we're, that we're seeing going on in the world. You got fires happening in certain places that you're struggling with putting out. You got everything going on with the virus. And now it's, you know, this Delta variant and, you know, people are kind of panicking you know, about that, you know, not everyone, but you know, you got some people that are kind of panicking and nervous about that. And what happens is sometimes when stress levels rise, you know, we tend to be more short fused. We tend to not be as merciful. We, we tend to not be as patient as we should be. And I remember on one of the, uh, episodes recently. I don't, I can't remember. I believe it was on one of the eat up Mondays when I was just talking about mercy. And I was like, you know, some of the words that are synonyms to mercy is benevolence, blessing, charity, forgiveness. And one of them was tolerance and leniency. And that's something grace. And, and these are the things that we're not seeing when it comes to our present day world. You know, I've talked in the past about people making these videos, so-called exposing other Christians and other preachers and things of that nature. And listen, there's a time and a place for that. There are many times in the Bible. Well, I won't say many, but there are some times in the Bible where, you know, I remember uh, Paul had to call out Peter and, you know, they both had to call out other individuals. So that happens. But when you make that your ministry, when you make it your lifelong mission to watch other people's videos and find out what they're doing wrong so that you can talk about it, I really don't know what kind of ministry that is. I don't really see that in the Bible. Yes, I see where God uses some of the men of God to call out Uh, different individuals here and there, but it is not a consistent thing in their ministries. And when you see that, that's something you got to be very careful about. So it just seems like, you know, in this present day and age, whether it's in the church, out of the church, you know, people are really not showing mercy the way that they should be. You know, it's, it's almost as if, you know, you can mess up as an individual, but let somebody else mess up. And it's like, oh, there's, there's no, you know, like God, there's no room for you to get that situation right. You know, it's like the most terrible thing that has ever happened. But when you mess up, you know, it's like, oh, well, be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet. And it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, we ought to all be showing mercy. And that's not turning a blind eye to sin or if somebody's doing something that is contrary to the word of God. That's not what we're talking about. God will lead us on when to address those things, how to address those things. But when your constant thing is just jumping down people's throat for mistakes that they may have made, their shortcomings, that is a problem. And we saw that, you know, if you remember one of the stories in the Bible was the woman that was caught in adultery, you know, and remember they, you know, the Pharisees brought her, you know, um, unto Jesus. And they were like, master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. So basically they were trying to say to Jesus, like, look, we caught her red handed. And the scripture went on to say that, you know, they said this because they were tempting Jesus. They were, and, and look at this. 
and and it's something that we can learn from that story. They they didn't even really they wasn't even really that concerned about her being caught in a very act of adultery or her soul or her just doing something that was contrary to the word. They were really using this as an opportunity to try to set up Jesus. And believe it or not, when you see people, quote unquote, exposing other ministries, exposing other people, whether that's politicians or whatever have you, sometimes there are hidden motives in those individuals' actions. Not everybody. I think there are some people out there sincerely that want to get the truth out. They feel like they're doing the right thing, but I just don't see in the scriptures where your ministry could just be constantly every video exposing somebody or pointing out something that somebody is doing wrong. There has to be some type of grace somewhere in there, some type of prayer, you know, some type of, some type of love. You know, we know that the scriptures talk about in Galatians and talk about, you know, restoring, you know, such a one in the spirit of meekness. It's like, where's that spirit of meekness? Because a lot of times when you watch these exposed videos or hear these different people talking about these individuals, they're very harsh. They're very matter of fact. They're very, listen, I know for a fact this person is doing X, Y, and Z and that they've done this. And sometimes even in that, they don't have all of the facts. But when we look at the woman that was caught in adultery, you know, first of all, you know, they're not even doing this for the right motives. They want to set up Jesus. But I love it because the scripture said that, you know, Jesus, he stooped down and how, you know, with his finger, he just rolled on the ground as, as if he didn't even hear him. And, you know, when they continue asking him, uh, he got up and said unto them, he was like, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. So he says, listen, all right, you caught her in adultery. You caught her in a very act. All of you that are without sin, go ahead and throw that first stone. And the Bible says that once again, he stooped back down to the ground, begin to write on it again. And the scripture says those that heard him say that being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one. They left one by one from, I believe, the older, you know, from the older to the youngest. And Jesus was left alone, you know, with the lady. And, and Jesus asked her, you know, after he got up, he says, listen, you know, are there, you know, what, what did he ask? Her? He said, listen, oh, yeah, woman, where are thine accusers? And um, he says, has no man condemned thee? And she was like, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, he said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And that's a key thing, because remember, when I have conversations about about mercy and talking about being merciful. Remember, I always make it plain. I always have to say this so people can understand where I'm coming from. We are not talking about winking at sin or acting as if what the person did wasn't sin or wasn't wrong. No, but look at, she was dead wrong. Jesus, by Jesus saying that to her at the end, go and sin no more. He was acknowledging, listen, I'm showing you mercy I'm telling you, you know, to go be blessed, but I am also going to let you know sin no more. So he's not winking at it. He's not acting like it didn't happen. So that's not what we're talking about. But look it, he could have jumped down, down, all down her throat because he is God in the flesh. He is the word. But did he jump down her throat? No, there are times where we are to show mercy. It isn't always Every time we need to let somebody know about themselves and what they're doing wrong and you can't never get it right. No. And one thing that I love that he asked her, you know, after he asked her, where was her accusers? He says, have no man condemned thee. And you have to think about that word condemn. It's a very powerful word to to condemn someone is to damn them. You know, it's basically to doom them to death, to to declare them incurable. So basically, when you condemn somebody, you're saying, listen, you're it's all over for you. You can't be cured. You can't be fixed. And that's a very dangerous thing to do because we know with God, all things are possible. So when we see these individuals doing things that are so crazy to us or, you know, so out of control, or we feel like there's no way back from that, you know, we're basically saying, if we find ourselves saying, listen, this person is of the devil, God is no longer with them. He's no longer going to use them and this and that. Listen, you're condemning them. You're you're now saying that they are no longer in, in incurable, and that's a very dangerous place to be. And I would caution you guys to be careful when you put your mouth on somebody and say certain things if God did not tell you to say it. Another definition of condemn is to declare unfit for use or service. So you're basically saying they are no longer, 
you know, useful to the Lord. They're no longer good for any type of service. Listen, that is not your call to make. You don't a hundred percent know that unless God told you. And if you're bold enough to say God told you, then stand on that. That's between you and God. And if you, if he didn't say it, it's going to be some serious trouble. And that is going to be something that's going to bite you in the behind when you stand before the Lord. So, you know, just seeing all of the different things going on out in the world and just people just, 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 they're not, they're intolerant, you know, they're insensitive, you know, especially with the virus going around and, you know, they're talking about the numbers are rising. I mean, I saw something on the news recently where, um, they're, they're almost starting like a, 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 a friend cancel culture, like a, oh man, it, it kind of threw me for a loop. It was basically those that were vaccinated talking about how they were starting to cut off their friends that was unvaccinated. Now think about that. Like you mean to tell me somebody you've been friends with 20, 30 years, you are willing to cut them off because they have yet to be vaccinated. Like that is, that is crazy. Like if there's any, you know, not showing mercy type of thing. I think that is it because if you are concerned about them possibly getting you sick or whatever, have you just don't go near them. You just give them their space, give them their time to make whatever decision they're going to make. And as a friend, you honor whatever decision they're going to make. You don't cut them off. What kind of love is that? Like what part of the Lord is that? You know, oh, you know, what are you going to say? Oh, they don't care anything about me. But listen, they don't have to come around you. You don't know why this individual may be making the choice that they're making. If you made the choice to get vaccinated, that's fine. Nobody's upset about that. Nobody's saying, oh, you shouldn't have done that because of they're talking about this and they talk. No, you made that decision. You felt comfortable in the Lord. Or if you're not in the Lord, you just felt comfortable in making that decision for whatever reason. Fine. But when you start talking about cutting people off and not messing with people, that's a very scary thing. And when I saw that, I don't really watch the news a lot. So I kind of stumbled across it. I kind of came in a room where um, the news was on and that's what was playing. And I'm like, yo, is, is this what we're doing out here? Are we cutting off lifelong friends because of a decision that they did not make? And here's the thing we have to think about. We don't know why people are making the decisions and not making the decisions that they are. You know, guess what? It's a known fact that some people have taken the vaccine and gotten very sick. Some people have taken the vaccine and been okay. Some people have taken the vaccine and died. So if this is an individual that is not, you know, convinced that if they take it, that they're not going to get sick or possibly pass away, that's okay. Give that individual some space. You don't cut them off and, and, you know, then, you know, make it public to everybody. Yeah, I cut her off and I cut like that is, it's, it's just a super scary time that we're living in all the road rage incidents that's going on. You know, people getting into it at stoplights, blowing other people's heads off and shooting up people's cars. Like it is out of control, people losing their job. And these are some of the things that we've seen in our lives in the past, but now it seems like they have been magnified. And it seems like now we're able to see them even more because of social media and because people are quicker to pull out their camera than to intervene and not allow certain things to go down. You know, to them, it's more beneficial if they catch it on their camera and put it on World Star or TikTok or whatever have you. So it is a crazy time that we're living in, but I am encouraging you, you that are listening to the sound of my voice, show some mercy because you want God to show you mercy. You need to be showing others mercy. And that's what I just wanted to encourage you guys about this week. Listen, the scripture talks about how in the end times, the love of many is going to wax cold. And, you know, we've been, we've been quoting that scripture for years and we've been seeing that we've been seeing people get colder and colder, but it just seems like at this point in time, it seems like it's just moving. It's just moving a lot faster. It just seems like, you know, everything is, is, is moving like at warp speed. It's just, everything is getting out of control and it's not getting better. But we that are saved, we that know Christ, we need to show the love of Christ. We need to show the mercy of Christ. We need to show the grace of Christ. And if God does put on our heart to rebuke somebody or, you know, then the scripture says that open uh, rebuke is better than secret love. So we're not against rebuking. We're not against disciplining, you know, whether that's having to get on a family member or our children or whatever have you, but make sure that 
There is some mercy in there. Make sure that we remember where we came from. Make sure we remember how God showed us mercy when we couldn't get it right. And I'm not just talking about when we wasn't saved. Think about the times you could not get it right and may still not be getting it right as you are a saved individual following after Christ. Let's think about those moments, guys. Let's think about where we are in our lives and show mercy. This Once again, this does not mean that we wink at sin in somebody else's life or in our own life. No, we want to get these things right because the scripture says, shall you continue in sin that grace shall abound? God forbid. What is that saying? Just like Jesus told a woman, go and sin no more because next time I might not be there when they drag you somewhere. Next time they might grab you, drag you somewhere, stone you, kill you, and then you're done. So don't keep playing with that sin. So I just wanted to encourage you guys, listen, be merciful as your father also is merciful. That scripture, Luke 6 and 36, if you read the next verse, 37, it says, judge not and ye shall not be judged. And we know that the scriptures is not talking about, uh, you know, judging a, a situation where you have facts on, because if somebody does something and you have the facts on that, and there's a time that God says, listen, listen, you need to address that. That is different, but it says, judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not. There that word goes again, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Another thing that we have to really deal with in our hearts is forgiveness. Listen, let's forgive one another as the Lord has forgiven us. Guys, know that I love you. And I want to say I appreciate you guys for just being a part of the YouTube channel, the podcast, everything that we're doing. I just want to say once again, I appreciate you guys. And I pray that you guys are taking these messages in and that you are applying them to your life. Because listen, we are in the end times. I don't know how much time is left, you know, but we if, if you take a good look at what's going on, Things are picking up and they are moving rapidly. And we just want to make sure we that are saved, that are in Christ, that we remain in Christ and that we encourage those that are not in Christ yet to get in Christ and that we be that example for them. But if they see us out there not acting Christ-like, not showing mercy, not showing love, then why would they want the Lord and Savior Jesus that we serve? Know that I love you guys. And until the next time we hop on the podcast together. Shalom.